So let me do this and the next question together. And what I will tell you is that this is a fairly straightforward application of formula question because it's, it's asking about, you know, what is the minimum diameter on a mirror on a telescope? And then they give some pieces of information that you can use to figure out what is the uh, angle um, kind of in your visual field? What's the angular separation between the two things? And as you're thinking about that, you know, minimum, resolvable angles, what you're thinking of is the Rayleigh criterion, which, as I mentioned in the lecture, is in some way a kind of an arbitrary criterion because what you're applying is saying that the when you look at the diffraction pattern of the two point sources, um, we are saying let's uh, position them so that the maximum of one pattern is at the minimum of the other pattern. And um, the thing is, uh, if you got a really good equipment, really good signal to noise ratio, maybe you can resolve something that's closer together. On the other hand, if your equipment, um, if your signal isn't that strong, maybe they need to be farther apart. But this is kind of a reference size so that we can we have a single number we can quote as the diffraction limited the resolution limit. And that Rayleigh criterion, applying it to a circular aperture, gives this uh, expression. Theta mean, it's a ratio of two lengths, uh, wavelength and aperture size. <laughs> and the way I remember them is, uh, so one way it gives you a really small number, the other way it gives you a really large number. You want this to be a really small number. So it should be lambda over d. Because this is microscopic, this is macroscopic, this is going to give you a small number. And for circular shaped aperture, there's a, this numerical factor, 1.22, that accounts for the fact that you are working with a circular aperture. Uh, if it had been like a slit, it would have been just the lambda over d. And that's uh, the situation in the lecture I've uh, discussed in a little more detail. So, uh, I feel like I, it might be good to just to write a couple more things because they're not asking for, um, so as they're asking us for minimum diameter, they're not giving us the angular quantity. Instead, they're giving us the lengths that we can use to calculate the angular quantity. So this is the picture I want you to have in mind. If you're an observer here and you're looking at some two points far away, uh, then, so you are looking at the number that we want to relate to eventually is this angle here. This angle is what we want to call our theta mean. And uh, it looks like in this question they've given us this distance between the two points and some distance r to the object. And really the thing to remember is that whenever you have a situation like this, this distance here, you can approximate it by the arc length. Um, so even though arc length is curved, the, it is this, this straight line. For small angles, arc length and the, the straight line should be bare, more or less the same, close enough. Uh, and the arc length, if you remember how angle radian is defined, arc length has this uh, super easy formula that I recommend everyone memorize of uh, radius times the angle, when the angle is specified in radians. It is, is uh, in fact, how radian was defined. It's the one of the few, uh, well, it's the only angular unit that's not arbitrary. I always say, you know, 360 degrees for a circle is arbitrary. So, so let me plug that in so that I know what symbols to use. So that theta mean will be determined through this. Oh, so I need to have a version of it solved for theta mean, which would be L over R. They are L. They are, you know, as a, uh, labeled here. So, all right. So let me just uh, declare all my symbols. That's my uh, lambda. That I have to say lamb because lambda is a special keyword in Python. T L and R. I think they are all fine. Uh, the equation I want to solve for is 1.22 times wavelength divided by d is equal to the arc length divide by distance r, or radius of the circle. Um, I'm going to solve this for, uh, yeah, d, the letter I'm using for diameter of the aperture is the same d they're using. So let's just solve this. By the way, I'm doing this super lazily. You could do this. I think most people can do this algebra in their head. But 
even if not, use computer algebra system. Uh, so let me put this into a variable where, uh, where I tighten something that, uh, let me just delete this. Okay. Um, all right, that is what it is. Let me substitute in the values we have. So we have the details. So that's going to be the arc length. Um, and I think I'm just going to leave it in kilometers because kilometer will cancel out in this ratio. That's what makes radian non-arbitrary. Um, distance of 384,000 kilometers. Again, will cancel out. And then we are given the wavelength of 508 times 10 to the power of minus 9 uh, for nanometer. So the answer we get here will be in meters. And so for centimeters, I'll need to multiply this by 100. I think I can do that in my head. And hopefully not <laughs> make a mistake with the unit conversion I've been making in all other questions. Um, I think it's the reciprocals that uh, trip me up. Uh, which is why I would uh, encourage people to learn how to do unit conversion by hand so that whenever something strips you up, you can just uh, go through the longer way and do it properly. Let's look at the next question that I'm hoping is very similar. A spy satellite orbits Earth at some height. So that's my, let me just lab, start labeling the symbols that correspond to the symbols I've already used. So this height should be R, distance from the satellite to what they are looking at. Uh, what is the minimum diameter? Oh, the same thing we've solved before. Little crops of columns of troops marching. Uh, so this would be our L, our claim. Awesome that. Okay, I think it's the same variable we've already solved before. So we can just take this and just uh, plug in the different numbers. The distance between troops are in uh, 1.5 meters. Uh, so I need to convert R to meters. So 185 kilometers, so times 10 to the power of 3 for conversion from kilometer to meter. And the wavelength is 585 nanometer. So the size, yeah, not that big. Only uh, like 10 centimeter. That's a small sized 10 centimeter. Yeah, 8.8 yeah. .8 centimeter. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, and, and uh, you know, when they're designing it, they'll probably stack it for a few times that because that's the, this is the fundamental physics limit. Um, a lot of the high quality mirrors, when you buy it, they'll say diffraction limited uh, resolution or whatever. And unless you are doing, buying research grade equipment, um, a lot of them don't uh, perform at uh, diffraction limited uh, well, quality. So 